Hey guys, what's up? This is Eric Lennon RPG and today I'm gonna show you what I consider to be the best Switch JRPGs so far, but I am not including remakes or remasters. I will be including ports, however, as long as they are from this same current generation. And with that clarified, let's begin! Number 10, Disgaea 5 Complete. As its title implies, it is a port of the original PS4 release, but now with all the DLC content. Other than that, it's the exact same game, so technically speaking, it's just a re-release on a different console. Several overlords unite against Void Dark, the Demon Emperor, to exact revenge for destroying their netherworlds. But the main character, Kilia, has a more personal vendetta of his own, apparently being just a regular, wandering demon. He joins forces with the other overlords anyway, specifically Serafina, the female heroine of the game. Like all these Gaia games, it's full of comedy, twisted shenanigans and prinnies. The battle system is as classic as ever, but with some additions here and there. You still play on grids, position your characters and execute their attacks separately or in a row if you want to. Now you can see the resistance and weakness of every enemy, as well as having a revenge skill system triggered whenever an ally falls in battle. With this small twist, the game becomes more engaging and less troublesome. Still a big ass grind fest, but more welcoming for beginners into the series, this Gaia 5 is a great RPG on the Nintendo Switch. Number 9. Atelier Raisa, Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout. Raisa lives in a peaceful village exploring nearby places with her childhood friends. But it's so peaceful she often gets bored to pieces. Upon a fateful encounter with an alchemist, she marvels at the art and starts a whole journey to become one. Gameplay is just like almost every single other Atelier game. You go from a variety of quests involving fighting monsters, gathering items, synthesizing items, and helping troubled people. The turning point of this entry was the battle system. It's still arranged in turns, but with real-time action bars, resembling the Final Fantasy series. Characters can often interrupt the flow of battle with the player giving commands to each one of them. So this gave the series that fresh and new twist to show a proper evolution. Before this game, the entire series was always struggling at being between hidden gems or simply underrated games. Ryza threw them all into popularity. It sold so well, places ran out of copies in no time. Both PS4 and Switch versions, specifically the latter, became rare and expensive. But because of its commercial success and seeing firsthand myself how good the game is, it's still one of the best JRPGs on the Switch. Number 8, Sinaway Chronicles 2. The second entry in the new Sinaway series, Treasure Hunter Rex, known as a salvager, accepts a dangerous and shady job to help a couple of drivers and their humanoid blades to find a legendary blade called Pyra. Upon being betrayed by them, Rex is saved by Pyra, and they join together afterwards to stop the betrayers while going back to civilization. All of this during the brink of war between two powerful nations. You already know the battle system here, how it evolved from the first game as a real-time action RPG. You can't directly control the attacks of your playable characters, only influence them by selecting skills and moving them around. There's so much to this system that it's kind of convoluted and often hard to appreciate. In fact, it's part of the reason why I'm not ranking this game higher on the list, even though it's still one of the best on the Switch. Plus, I feel the story, even though rich in plot, lore and universe, falls deeply into charismatic cliches and unnecessary fan service. Nevertheless, everything is enjoyable as it is. I would also like to include the game's DLC here, Torna the Golden Country, which turned out to be its own game shortly after its release. It acts as a prequel and I think it has better characters and story. 
but it's much shorter and heavily quest driven, especially since you can't go to the final dungeon unless you complete a big amount of quests. In everything else, it plays almost exactly the same as the original. Number 7. I am Setsuna. Originally released on the PS Vita in Japan, then on the PS4 worldwide, it's simply a digital re-release on the Switch. However, there exists a physical version of it, which is Chinese, I believe, with English subtitles. You play as Endear, a silent mercenary who's hired to kill Setsuna. She's actually a chosen sacrifice from her village to appease the demons overrunning the world. Upon meeting her and discovering her intentions, Endear changes his mind and joins her as her guard to protect her during her pilgrimage. The battle system is played on turns with an attack waiting bar similar to the old Final Fantasy games. Depending on the speed of the character, they will attack first or delay until last. Magic and skills play an important role as you can create combos between characters. There's also the momentum charge, which is basically a power boost based on the character's status. Overall, I Am Setsuna is a remarkably beautiful game in a world blanketed by snow, including a nostalgic and very memorable soundtrack to accompany its tragic endeavors. Number 6. Fire Emblem Three Houses The only game in this series so far to mix traditional role-playing elements with a classic Fire Emblem strategy core. It revolves around a school simulator where your main character, a silent protagonist, becomes the teacher of one of the three houses. By teaching and training your students and yourself, you'll help everybody perform better during battle. Now this game is divided into two arcs. School simulation will be first and then the all-out war between houses and nations will be the second. Campaigns are mainly run by the classic grid-based maps, but with a small new twist. Characters can either go solo or command platoons that will grant them boosts depending on the enemy they fight. Sounds complicated, but in the end the characters themselves are the ones doing all the actual fighting and the grinding. Because of these new characteristics including the school and dating simulators, Three Houses sometimes doesn't feel like a true Fire Emblem anymore. However, it's still an excellent strategy game and one of the best JRPGs on the Switch so far. Number 5. Valkyria Chronicles 4 Speaking about strategy RPGs, here's the latest game in this underrated series. It takes place during the fictional Second European War, just like the other games, specifically before and during the events of the first one. Nevertheless, it has its own characters, plot, conflict and side of the war, so you don't need to play the others to get into this one at all. Here you'll control Squad E, played by Claude Wallace, to fight for the Federation Army against the Empire controlling the powerful Valkyria. The battles in this game carry over the gameplay system from the previous entries in the franchise. You have to either defeat certain enemies or occupy the enemy camps in these large maps. There's often a different objective to achieve and different landscapes influenced by various terrains. This gives the game huge variety to avoid being repetitive. Squad E will be composed by the main characters and several other secondary soldiers. However, they all belong to groups of the several different classes and they all level up together at the base. The use of tanks, more customizable than the soldiers, will also give the player a mandatory experience. Still with its amazing cel-shaded graphics, Valkyria Chronicles 4 is yet another excellent RPG among the best on the Switch so far. Number 4. Octopath Traveler One of the hardest and biggest grindfests of the current generation, a turn-based RPG influenced by Square Enix's own saga series. You can choose between 8 different protagonists, but you will be able to recruit the rest of them to join you in your adventure. Nevertheless, each will still have their own story plot unrelated to the others. Doing your chosen character's main chapters will be the whole point of the game, 
but you'll want to help the others on their own chapters to make your grinding sessions more fluid, because the level difference between one chapter and another can be brutal. Now, Octopath Traveler has an amazing battle system that centers its simplicity around the elements, so even against the bosses you're gonna need to discern the strengths and weaknesses of every enemy while protecting your own. Half of the bosses in this game are extremely challenging, so the more you learn about how to exploit this system, the better chances of defeating them. Last but not least, aside from the beautiful looking graphics and art style of course, all that's left for me to praise is the intricate and well-polished story each and every single character has throughout the game. This is, without a doubt, one of the best JRPGs on the Switch so far. Number 3. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 so there's four games in the Cold Steel sub-series, all part of the big Trails franchise. I've played them all and these four games feel more like one enormous RPG cut into two volumes, so Cold Steel 3 and 4 are what I consider as the second volume. And yes, you need to play the first to understand the other. And yes, I strongly suggest you also play the other Trails games in the series. Anyway, after the closure from the first volume, Rin Schwarzer isn't a student anymore, but now a teacher, so most of the adventure of this third entry will revolve around Rin and his new students little by little being dragged into the inevitable war coming up. So it's slow at first, taking a while to really pick up, but once it does, I guarantee a fantastic story full of genius writing and plot twists. Of course involving a huge cast of playable characters, even from the first volume. Now, this is a turn-based RPG with a small touch of strategy. Where you move and position your characters will affect the flow of battle, especially with the bosses which can be pretty nasty quite often. But this combat shines through skills and magic, buffs and debuffs, and, crucially important, the big ass special attacks known as S-Crafts each character has. Trails of Cold Steel 3 is definitely both an outstanding new story phase and a rewarding continuation of the long-running Trail series. Number 2. East 8. Lacrimosa of Dana Initially released on the PS4 and PS Vita, this Switch version was a straight port with little to no difference. It includes all the costumes alright, but also has lower frame rate compared to its PS4 counterpart. Still, however, the same amazing action RPG. You follow Adol Kristin on a ship in the middle of the ocean that suddenly gets attacked by a giant monster. All surviving passengers, including him, end up stranded in a giant island with a mysterious background. Your job will then be to partner up with other characters in order to find the rest of the survivors scattered across the island, but also to repair the ship defeat the giant monster and escape from there. All of this while in another part of the island, Dana, the other protagonist of the game, faces a dangerous ordeal that could jeopardize everything. Just like every other Ease game, the action here is mostly hack and slash, but you can switch between the several different characters that will fight alongside Adol and each will have its own playstyle. There's tons of exploration to be done, many different interesting side quests and a strong focus on its masterfully written story. Without a doubt, this is one of the best JRPGs on the Switch so far. Number 1. Dragon Quest XI S complete and definitive version of the latest main entry in this legendary series. Do you play as an adopted young hero raised in a peaceful village? One day his stepmother reveals his origins to him and sends him to meet the king, but only to be wrongfully accused of being a heartbringer of evil. So starts the adventure of escaping prison, clearing your name, joining different characters and saving the world. Well, it wouldn't be Dragon Quest without this classic plot, would it? Ah, but the journey itself, the character's development, and the exploration of the enormous world embracing the story breaks through every single cliché to deliver a suspenseful, dramatic and memorable adventure. 
No Dragon Quest XI didn't change to action, it's still classic turn-based alright. Here, however, the new feature revolves around your characters being pepped up. During this state, they become more powerful, something you can definitely use to your advantage during battle. Graphically speaking, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. And in this definitive version, you can actually switch to a 16-bit graphic mode if you want to. Needless to say, it is an impressive RPG in all sense of the word, and a true comeback for one of the most important video game series of all time. Pokemon, Digimon, Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, you guys know I'm not a fan, which is the reason why I didn't include those games in this video. I do have, however, a couple of honorable mentions that I didn't include, like Knights of Azure 2, it's not a joke, I really enjoy this game, I don't care about the fan service, the combat here is amazing. And the other one is Astral Chain, although it is not exactly considered as an action RPG, more like just an action game with RPG elements, you be the judge. I think this is an action RPG, it's great, I just think it's not as great as any of the other games I showed in this video. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!